Detecting and responding to threats in the cloud is harder than doing it on-prem. Even when you do have the visibility you need, legacy security workflows weren't designed for the speed and complexity of cloud environments. Cloud-native security solutions from ExtraHop are purpose-built to spot threats across the hybrid attack surface, provide detailed investigation steps, and help you automate response. Request your 30-day free trial at securityweekly.com forward slash ExtraHop. When it comes to modernizing identity, Active Directory just makes everything harder, from managing access for contractors and departing employees to securing cloud apps and on-prem systems. Your company deserves better. Choose Okta, the modern identity platform that securely connects anyone that touches your organization to any technology they want to use. Okta reduces AD vulnerabilities, secures not only employees, but contractors and customers, simplifies domain consolidation, and reduces your attack surface. To learn more, visit securityweekly.com forward slash Okta. Welcome back, everyone, to Enterprise Security Weekly. Register for our upcoming webcast and virtual trainings by visiting securityweekly.com. Select the webcast training drop-down menu. Click registration. Our next webcast is with Synopsys. Better, faster, more secure code by combi combining SAST and SCA. Uh, Utsov Sagani, their senior product manager, uh, will be presenting. So make sure you check that out. We've got a lot more webcasts and virtual trainings in the pipeline, and we'll keep you updated uh, as they become available. Uh, Sumed Takar is the Chief Product Officer at Qualys, oversees worldwide engineering development and product management for Qualys. Sumed, welcome to the show. Hey, thank you very much. Yes, nice to have you on today. We're talking about uh, working from home, which is a big topic that a lot of folks are talking about, especially in cybersecurity. But from the perspective of if you're working as a sysadmin or an ops person, how do you still get your job done doing vulnerability management, patch management, uh, and all the things you have to do in ops when you're working from home and you're likely your entire workforce is also working from home. So Sumit, I want to turn it over to you uh, and just talk about what you're hearing from your customers and, and some of the interactions uh, that you're having on this topic. A great question. I mean, I think uh, in, in a matter of uh, four or five days, it, the entire world sort of shifted for uh, IT and security guys. Suddenly, uh, the thing that you had not expected, uh, you know, I was talking earlier to someone and they were saying that BCP uh, was okay we have this office and something happens here we'll just have the other office pick up and now there's no office globally nobody has right. any office operational and so um, it's a big shift and those who have been uh, really uh, reliant on having to leverage uh, on-prem uh, solutions for IT and for security uh, this is really throwing a, a big uh, uh, car, uh, wrench in, in, in their uh, journey because you now have a hard time uh, accessing and making sure that you have the right access to the right system over a, a connectivity that uh, will be impacted by many other things going on because you suddenly have the entire workforce on that same VPN, uh, which is slowing down. A lot of people complain now oh, that VPN is not slowing down because the entire workforce is on VPN. And so there's sort of two groups of things, right? There's the production systems that uh, need to be deployed and uh, patched and managed. And then there is the remote endpoints that now suddenly everybody uh, is, is taking their laptops home and doing things uh, from home. I think uh, a lot of organizations have moved their uh, connectivity uh, out to, uh, in terms of the, the systems out to data centers or cloud. So they are probably in a little bit better shape, especially uh, if they moved out to a data center and they have some links out there that can be leveraged. Uh, those who are moved to the cloud, I think today they are really in a much, much better shape, whether it's cloud or SaaS, because that has really um, created a, a sort of a, a, an environment where you're not reliant on the on-prem systems that you have deployed in the office. Uh, you can directly go to the cloud and you can do whatever needs to be done directly from your endpoint. So now that leads to the endpoint, which is the system that is sitting on your home network with uh, other 15 systems. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, my, my, my son has a Fortnite and a lot of the freebies that came with it installed yep. on his computer, <laughs> which is on the same network as my corporate uh, uh, mm -hmm. device or, or going to Wi-Fi hotspots. I, I heard somebody that their home network was slow, so they just drove over to the parking lot at, uh, behind the Starbucks and 
and work from there. So people are, yeah. are doing all kinds of different things right now. So how do you secure those? Because we're seeing right now that, uh, of course, the, the bad guys are, are uh, taking advantage of people's fear and, and sending them links to maps and downloadable PDFs mm-hmm. about uh, the COVID and everything else, which they're, uh, people open quickly and, and, and then the systems are, are at risk. And, you know, once you have uh, that happen, uh, you may have moved your data center into the cloud and you may, your sysadmin may be at home accessing the cloud console of AWS, but if that laptop that they are using is is compromised, uh, then you have some very interesting challenges there because now you don't even need to do any big hacking. You can essentially just leverage that to to get to the data center as well. So we're we're see, hearing customers uh, really in the in the short term right now very focused on what do we need to do to secure the the endpoints that suddenly uh, unprecedentedly. Uh, unprecedentedly are completely outside of the network uh, because yeah, it, they've been used to traditional tools. It sounds like, Sumed, that the really the thing on the endpoints is they're in much more hostile environments yeah. than ever before, and there's a shift in attackers uh, going after them. Uh, how do we keep those patched? I'm assuming the, the call solution allows me to do still do the vulnerability analysis and do patching. Do you find that your customers are being more diligent about that or has it taken a back seat in the past week or so and now they're moving towards i got to make sure these things are, are patched um yeah i think the importance of that has certainly increased a lot because look the the traditionally as as people have talked about digital transformation and moving into uh the cloud and all of that they've done that a lot on the data center side but uh, they have. There's been a tendency to really, uh, when it comes to endpoint workstations and things like that, and laptops, people think of the traditional way of security, which is everything in my office is secure because I have a perimeter firewall right. and I have network-based systems that can track activity of the devices and identify threats and things like that. Uh, so you've taken an approach where I don't need to necessarily focus that much on my laptops. And, and you know, you always see that people say vulnerability management, I'm first focusing on my uh, servers, uh, mm-hmm. rightfully so. Um, you know, endpoints, I have firewall, I have, I have antivirus, that's it, right? But uh, now you are you have taken those devices which were sort of, you know, protected by this perimeter defense and taken them out directly into an outside environment where you don't have those defenses, then you cannot put something around it. So that individual endpoint itself now becomes your new perimeter, mm-hmm. uh, right? That that yeah. one thing can be the path to your internal uh, systems. And so having that ability to make sure that that gets uh, secured immediately is at the top of the mind for our customers. No doubt we, we saw a lot of our customers immediately come to say, us and say, look, this is this is taken a front seat. We want a way to be able to um, secure these systems. And uh, some of them were initially like, well, you know, I kind of have my uh, on a traditional on-prem, uh, you know, SCCM can patch over VPN. Um, and then we say, well, have you looked at the last size of the patch from Microsoft? I mean, this is 500 megs plus uh, patches that right. if 5,000 users trying to download over your VPN concentrators, that's going to really kill your VPN. And so people are looking to say, how can I quickly move into a an architecture? So it's really a conversation about architecture. I mean, we're using Zoom. Mm-hmm. Uh, people are using BlueJeans. There's uh, WebEx. And uh, people have moved very quickly to using Teams and, and uh, uh, cloud-based email and, and video conferencing uh, because that's really kept the productivity going. People are able to collaborate from wherever they are. Uh, and the same really holds true for security, right? Leveraging cloud-based solutions that really make it extremely easy for these remote endpoints um, to to for people to take a look look at those and and be on top of those. That that's really important, right, Matt? Yeah, and I think Sumed, I th- you know, the assumption is I have an endpoint that's already got protections on it because maybe it's a corporate issued device. But my guess is there's a ton of remote workers that are used their home PCs now because they didn't absolutely. have corporate issued devices and there's no security on those. Yeah, so absolutely. I mean, we're seeing a lot. I, we, we have people who are saying, look, I mean, my uh, my laptop was really meant for my email that the company had issued and I was really used to having uh, 
uh, this uh, desktop at my office and so I cannot work on my laptop all day long uh, you know uh, I need to be able to use a desktop so people are using their home computers mm. uh, for doing things you know they install something here or there and uh, that that's another really and you know I mean at this point what are you going to say right like well we can't really issue uh, a new uh, device right away. I mean, I, I wanted a new webcam. I can't even find a webcam right now on any of the online sites, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> so so uh, you, you, people are, are definitely looking at uh, that this is a real thing. This is something that is really hitting them right now to say, I, I need visibility. And, you know, and, and then uh, people are asking, what, what do we need to do? So, uh, you know, of course, at Qualys, we, we provide the vulnerability management uh, capabilities and uh, we also added uh, patch uh, deployment capabilities, but really to help our customers right now. And, and our primary focus is our existing customers who need that immediate help. Fortunately, having a cloud-based platform, we're able to really scale that out quickly mm. to offer a 60-day uh, free service for all security of all of your uh, customers' remote endpoints. So they don't have to worry about talking to sales guys and, and cutting POs and all of that. You know, They can go to college.com slash remote patching and uh, really read up on some of the blogs and things like that that we have provided and, and sign up for the service to focus on getting started with securing these remote endpoints, uh, leveraging the cloud-based architecture. Because again, it's, it's all about the architecture. So it's not, not just Qualys, but any other solution that is cloud-based, I think that, that provides a pretty much the only real solution at this point, given the current situation to, to have a uh, visibility across the entire global footprint of all of the devices that are outside the environment now. Yeah, it's interesting. I remember years ago having debates with folks about the agent-based technology that promotes security and getting a lot of pushback. And now I bet a lot of those people are <laughs> wishing they had a full deployment <laughs> so on true. every endpoint, right? <laughs> yeah, so, so true. And that's actually a great point because uh, uh, all of this... Uh, you know, just for even even forget the agent, right? People were not even allowed to. Um, certain types of employees were not even allowed to work from home. They're like, no, right. no, you have to come to the office. <laughs> and now it's like suddenly it's okay. Oh yeah, you you should work from home. Right. Why are you not working from home? Uh, and and the same goes for the agent because you know this and to the cloud based uh, platform as well. You know the pushback on. I mean, imagine if today we hadn't migrated to uh, to email uh, for uh, cloud based email. Right. People were using Exchange on prem, uh, so uh, th there was that. There has been that pushback of oh, I'm not sure about the cloud. I'm not sure about uh, having an agent, and now you suddenly realize that I have this problem at hand, which I needed a solution a week ago, uh, and the only realistic uh, solution that can deploy at that speed and uh, I, with that ease is any sort of a cloud-based solution, and mm. so. Uh, we're seeing that transformation quickly. Suddenly, management is really willing to say, "Do what it takes. We need that thing security right, right now." And uh, and 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 that's a good opportunity for people to sort of rethink. And these barriers crumble pretty quickly now. Now they yeah. don't want to go and do a big test where that takes like six months of evaluation. They want to say, "Does it work? Can I push a patch?" And yes, it does. And then go with it. Uh, go ahead, Matt. Yeah, I was going to say, Sumed, do you think? After we're through this crisis, right, we've had less reliance or, or concern about the standard workstation endpoint, right, really focused right. on the data center assets. Do you see this crisis being a shift in, in a different approach after this to say, wait, we do have to think about all of our endpoints, not just what's in the data center, because who knows, the, the cat's out of the bag with this one to the point where it could happen again. Is this now oh, yeah. part of normal operations? I, I think uh, this is definitely going to give a pause to all uh, organizations and businesses to really think about this whole new way that you can do business, right? So there have been organizations that have um, completely focused on a remote workforce that's good enough, but this, those have been in minority. And now... You know, when, I don't know how long this is going to last, and neither one of us knows. But uh, let's say you have a month of people really working from home, working remotely. I think at a, at a higher level, at a philosophical level, people are going to start thinking. I probably uh, are. I, I am able to open up more options for hiring now and having more options to have people 
uh, have onboarded because I've gone through this experience and we can actually be productive, quite productive actually, having a remote workforce with the right set of tools that enable that collaboration. And I think uh, that will continue. And, and you know, as, as that happens, of course, uh, the questions that came up right now is how important is the security of my uh, workstation and uh, my laptop and the reliance on on-prem tools. People will, I think, uh, be changing the way they think about uh, cloud-based uh, solutions and leveraging cloud-based solutions, whether it's email, video conferencing, or security solutions. I I really think that this is going to make people rethink because again, you know, deploying a solution, you, you know, you're usually deploying it for a year anyway. So you, you're going to have a, you, people are not going to deploy a security solution or a, or a IT solution for this remote workforce issue that just for a, a month or so. Right? right. Right. So, so that, that will give them more time to really uh, absorb and adjust and, and, and you know, compare and contrast. But but this is a fundamental, this has caused a fundamental shift, which I think will, will stay there. Yeah. My, my concern on the server side of things, when we talk about the VPN concentrators and being under heavy stress and load right now, how, how do you patch and upgrade those now? <laughs> like, what if you had <laughs> a critical patch that needed to, we've seen vulnerabilities in oh, Citrix yeah. products, right? Um, yeah. uh, how, how do we do that now? Are people just holding off on those and how at risk are we? Oh, well, I mean, that's, that's the um, uh, big question of on-prem systems anyway, right? Uh, that do you need to have uh, rely? I mean, how big is your reliance on that system at the end? That's what it comes down to, right? I think people can patch a lot of these systems remotely, but then you need a downtime. And yeah. now, if your if your workforce is uh, you know eighty ninety percent reliant on cloud based solutions and ten percent reliant on VPN, that's you know you can take a downtime with a schedule and all of that. If you are a, a company that has really not move to any of the SaaS and cloud solutions and you have everything on-prem, boy, I mean, those VPN concentrators right now are a big problem. But, you know, what time do you even take a downtime where you can say right. my it, most sysadmin can actually lose yeah. access to, to my production systems for an hour while I patch my VPN concentrator. It, it's so, funny. When I was uh, standing up VPN services uh, in a previous job, like in the early 2000-ish time frame, um, I, the downtime, my maintenance window for VPNs was when everyone was in the office, right? Yes. That, like my, they're That's like, why are you point. scheduling yeah. maintenance during the day? I'm like, well, this is for VPNs because if yeah. I do it off hours, then I'm going to impact a lot more people, yes. right? Um, yeah, and, but now with everyone working from home, what, where, where's yeah. your window, right? You better hope right. you have some resiliency if it's on-prem, uh, which, I mean, you know, even back then we had more than one. Uh, it can right. you know, flip people over, but it always ran the risk of having downtime. A much better place for that is in the cloud where you can stand yeah. up new infrastructure uh, more easily. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, that those are the questions that are coming up. I mm. mean, you know, people never really thought that much about it. You know, VPN, you know, VPN was down. So, uh, you know, a few people are not able to work on the weekend, not a big deal, but right. now you have that. And so uh, organizations are looking for guidance. They're looking for, I mean, we, we got a lot of questions on, uh, hey, what do I need to do for this remote workforce, right? Is, is that, should I, it's patching enough? I mean, how do I patch? And I think uh, the good news is that uh, really most organizations can start with some very basics of uh, uh, cybersecurity, the basic hygiene. Uh, patching is, of course, one, making sure that your systems are patched, but um, also looking at configurations, uh, right? Mm -hmm. Making sure that it's not just that you're missing a patch. Even if your system is patched, if you don't have basic things like screensaver or screen lock enabled. Windows firewall, or, right? That'd be one uh, thing I'd yeah. be checking for as a, an admin today is I want a firewall. daily report of which systems have the firewall enabled and which ones don't and how right. does that shift? And I want to make sure everyone's got, because like we said, they're in hostile environment. They're either at home yeah. or they're at Starbucks or on who knows Wi-Fi network, right? right. They need that or firewall enabled. Or an antivirus, right? Yeah. Like, is the antivirus even basic antivirus? Is that up and running? And, you know, is it up to date? Is it up to date? Uh, right. So. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I think, you know, you guys did a pretty good blog article a week or so ago on, 
your new VMDR, where you have the integration of not only the vulnerability data, but the configuration data is yes. part of your, your patch prioritization. So anybody who wants to understand how these play, I, I, I kind of point them back to that blog post because you guys did a pretty good job laying that out a couple weeks ago. Yeah, and because you know what what is happening now is that um, as, as people, some are getting better at patching, some are are not so much. But uh, the 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 count of vulnerabilities is really uh, becoming uh, significantly higher, just because there's more systems and all of that. And so the prioritization is becoming important, and uh, the prioritization is really has to be personalized to your organization. It cannot be because you know you may have a a vulnerability that is exploitable uh, on a system, but in your environment, if there is a, a network level, a, a configuration setting that is enabled that mitigates that, or what if you have a vulnerability on a software, but the software is not really running on the system, right? Mm. Today, there is a need to be able to look at a holistic approach of uh, all the different data points about that system and make a better judgment on what's truly causing the risk. And of course, that's that's what VMDR is all about, that instead of uh, uh, doing what some of the other vendors are doing, where they just say, you know, our machine learning has predicted that this vulnerability is bad, uh, which you don't have need a machine learning because it says uh, RCE in the title, mm -hmm. <laughs> we know it's bad. Uh, we really took the approach more of saying let let's let's do the hard work of correlating config settings vulnerabilities um, uh, and uh, the, the 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 severity of the the exploit and all of that and and give a more personalized uh, a report uh, to the um, IT admins and security admins to say these are the really risky issues. And then, of course, with the uh, unique integration of patch management directly into our solution, they can click a button right there to get the patching going. Because a lot of times, even after identifying the issue, getting patching going is a big challenge because it's you know it's a different department, and there are twenty tools across uh, you know ten countries and uh, mm. different teams that are responsible for patching, and there's always that pushback, and so. Um, you, it just leaves the organization exposed to risk longer when you don't have an integrated solution that, that can also do the, uh, the inventory and all of that, which actually brings me to the other point, which is even before we talk about all of that, the most important thing that a lot of people struggle with is just basic inventory. So you talk about remote devices. What are these devices, right? What operating yeah. systems are they running? Are they running... Uh, unauthorized software on those or you know what kind of uh, hardware do, are they on what kind of wi-fi hardware do they have or you know does any of those have the, the crook vulnerability i mean there's right. so many basic things that uh, people struggle with and especially when you have systems remote that that inventory aspect is important so uh, what what did we really focused on was to say how do we get inventory vulnerability assessment prioritization and patching all combined into a single package, a single workflow, and really change the definition of what vulnerability management should be moving forward, which you should not really be asking, do you have a tool that gives me good uh, detection of vulnerabilities? It should be, do you have a tool that does VMDR where I can do my uh, discovery uh, assessment, prioritization, and uh, deployment all in a single solution? Sumed, how, so I how granular is the patch management like does it let me schedule rollouts uh and patch things of different priorities and let me do that slowly by user group like how granular uh is it today yeah absolutely it's very very feature rich you know you can really schedule uh all of your patching based on priority of the patch also based on the priority of the systems right and you can do test systems first roll that out if that is successful then do the rest of the system so um the you know, that's something that we had to learn uh, moving more into sort of patching, which is not purely a security aspect, but an mm -hmm. operational aspect, because here we are touching systems. There's reboots required. How do you schedule the reboots? How do you provide messages? So a lot of that had to be thought through. And we built that into more seamless workflows directly into that the solution. So, uh, you know, you can do everything from uh, scheduling very granular all the way to also being able to roll back your patches if yep. something goes wrong through a, a single console, uh, you know, sitting in the cloud. And today that actually works out beautifully because my uh, IT security admin sitting and uh, 
it's how it's pleasant and is able right. to essentially click a button and patch all the remote systems in in India, Europe and US that we have everywhere. Right. And the important thing schedule those rollouts, right? Because yes. I think previously you might have patched, you know, maybe by department. If it's me today, I'm not patching an entire department, right? Because there's they can cover for each other. So maybe I'm yeah. like one person in this department and one person in that department. They get the patch. If it goes well, I'm spreading it out, right? Right. And the nice thing is that, uh, you know, scheduling really was a big factor of it was, again, you know, not not killing your systems with downloading patches and utilizing too much of the bandwidth and the network yeah. and all of that, right? Now, especially on remote systems, the way the the Qualys solution works is that the, the patches themselves are pulled directly from the CDNs of the of the vendors. So mm -hmm. you don't really necessarily need to schedule a rollout that is uh, serial, right? Mm -hmm. You can basically say patch everybody and it's not going to impact your systems or your VPN because those systems are individually from their home network connection going to go to the cloud and directly pull the oh, required patches and that's patch awesome. them. And that's mm -hmm. a big difference. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. So can I just say this? Hallelujah. Yeah. Finally, mm -hmm. somebody right. did the closed loop patch <laughs> process. So, <laughs> Absolutely. So awesome. uh, you know, yeah. it's, it's, it's a long time coming. But, you know, I think a part of that was really, uh, again, leveraging the architecture, right? It was not really about just uh, a, a workflow. The reason uh, we were able to do that because of the, the cloud-based architecture that we have put in place where we were able to scale all of this in the back end. If you were trying to use your traditional systems, to put all these things together, I mean, in your on-prem systems and your other vendors, you're going to have to first go out, augment hardware, you know, deploy new things and more uh, more uh, sensors and more agents. So for us, uh, with, with 30 million agents out there, we really have a, a very good base that we were able to build on and all the work that we did on the platform side in, in investing in engineering to really build a highly scalable platform that that indexes like 30 trillion data points today sorry 3 trillion data points today uh, and, and uh, does billions of kafka messages so that enabled us to kind of put that pipe processing pipeline leveraging the power of the cloud because you have to do a lot of crunching to mm. see the priority of the host what is on the machine look at every data point on the machine see if what are the the the, the properties of the vulnerability and then match those together to bring up something that that you can really say hey look we've, we've done really analyze everything and a human really cannot do that for hundreds and thousands of uh, vulnerabilities out there so so that's why i think uh, we're really excited that uh, we were able to put all of that together on the back end and with our agent to come up with this uh, seamless end-to-end uh, -end closed loop process as you rightly put put that uh... awesome Yes. Um, Matt, any final questions? No, I, I'm just I'm I'm so excited. I, am too, so, I mean, having worked in vulnerability hey, management, right? Yes. <laughs> this is uh, we always, you know, it, since the, the first time we thought of this, right, uh, yeah. and started doing vulnerability management. The next logical step was, well, why why can't we just apply the patches? And for whatever reason, there was. Uh, a yeah. lot of pushback uh, against that, but it's good to see today, given the number of assets that we have, of course, uh, that this capability is there. You can find out more by visiting securityweekly.com forward slash Qualys. Uh, find out more about the advances in the Qualys platform, uh, which, you know, Matt and I certainly are very <laughs> excited about as well. So, Sumed, thank you so much for appearing on Enterprise Security Weekly. All right, thank you very much, and I I, uh, I definitely ask both of you to go uh, to qualis dot com slash remote patching and and uh, get the patching solution for your own uh, home personal computers as well. Absolutely, uh, that's going to help you guys be secure. So, sounds like a good plan. Thanks, Sumed. All right, thank you very much. And with that, we'll take a short break. Come back with yet another interview. Todd Beardsley from Rapid Seven will be joining us next. Stay tuned. <laughs> 